Let's move on now to the final email of the day. And the final email today comes to us from Nicholas Rojas, who writes, Hi, John and crew. I wanted to get your opinion on the interview Ezra Miller did and he was when he was asked about the development on the Flash movie. He <clears throat> quoted that the movie is just like the Flash himself, always late, but when he arrives, stuff gets done. What did you think about these comments and when do you think we'll finally see a Flash film? All right, thanks a lot for the email, Nicholas. And for those of you who don't know what he's talking about, a couple of days ago, Ezra Miller was being asked about the... On again, off again, it's coming, it's not coming. We have a director, no we don't, seven times over, Flash movie. And he said, the, he said that they're still working on it, it's still coming. He made some references saying that this Flash movie will create like a new universe. It's a speedster universe. Because in the DC world we have the multiverse. And the speedsters move in between the multiverse and we're going to create like a new universe that's just about the speedsters and all this kind of stuff. And then... When asked about the delays, he gave the stereotypical answer we get out of everybody. It's delayed because we care so much. Because we're so committed to making this one a love letter to the fans. We're making this one for the fans. You know what's funny? That's a word-for-word -word script about the explanation they just gave for the delays on um, the Harry Potter uh, Newt Scamander next movie for the new Fantastic Beast. It's a word for word. It's just that we care so much about it. We really want to do this one for the fans. It's like, okay, yeah, yeah, we've heard that before. <laughs> so now look, this Flash movie, before we talk about, get to your basic question is, if this movie ever really going to happen? This movie has been fraught with on again, off again drama it's from screenwriters, release dates, filming start dates, like now no release date, all this kind of stuff isn't even happening. But not the least of which, it's really all summed up to, even if you just look at the history of the directors. Because if you look at the history of the directors, it's like they jump into the speed force and they disappear. Because at first, it looked like the front runners were Chris Lord or <clears throat> Chris Miller and Phil Lord wrote a story stream. By the way, this is from the, uh, the good folks over at Slash Film who put together this little outline, which is a perfect representation of it. Uh, also wanted them to direct. They said no. They were busy. So Warner Brothers actually spent some time trying to get Lord Miller to direct. They turned it down. Then you get Seth Graham Smith, who's got a number of really good films on his resume. He was hired to write and direct the film. And then the dreaded departed in 2016 due to, quote unquote, creative differences. Then you get Rick uh, Famuyiwa, who did a great job on like a thousand things. He's, by the way, he's going to be directing some of the uh, Star Wars Mandalorian show that's coming up. He got he became the director in 2017, but then he left because of quote unquote creative differences. Now look, before we get on to the whole Zemeckis and everything thing, I've never understood this. How are there? I've never understood this. Whether it's with Lucasfilm and their directors, whether it's DC and their directors, whatever. How do you not figure out if you have creative differences or not before you hire the director? Like, I, I don't know, Rob, call me crazy. If I've got, <laughs> if I'm going to spend $300 million on making and marketing a film <clears throat> and I need to hire a director, I am going to sit down with that director for four or five interviews, really go over what the idea for the movie would be and make sure we are on the same page. To me, that has been, by the way, the, the biggest failure of Kathleen Kennedy at Lucasfilm has been, I think she's done a number of things well, yes, but I, to me the biggest thing she keeps stumbling over is she keeps hiring directors that she eventually has to let go because she didn't do good enough due diligence to make sure they were on the same page. And it's happened like three or four times over there, and we see it happening repeatedly at, at DC as well. And it's two directors in a row that you had brought on and then left over creative differences. How can you not get your shit together enough that you figure that stuff out before you hire them? And it's not just Disney, and it's not just Warner Brothers. Every studio does it, and I will never understand it. I will I will never understand. But let's move on here. So after Rick departed over creative differences, there was, re there was tons of reports that Robert Zemeckis was in final negotiations. Now, of course, guys like Sam Raimi, Mark Webb, Matthew Vaughn, their names are all in the mix as well. But the reports were Robert Zemeckis was down, and it was final negotiations, and then that fell apart. Then we heard that Lord Miller were back in the mix, and then that fell apart. Then they got the guys who directed Game Night, which I really enjoyed Game Night. They finally landed on the guys, John Francis Daly and Jonathan Goldstein, uh, who were co-writers on Spider-Man Homecoming, which is really good. They were announced as the directors, and there's been some speculation as to whether or not they'll actually end up being the directors. So, Rob, you hear 
all this stuff. You hear about this new interview with Ezra Miller talking about, you know, the Flash may be late, but news arrives. You see, you reflect on all the drama. Let me just ask you straight up here, Rob. Is this Flash movie actually going to happen, or is this Flash movie going to be one of the casualties of Walter Hamada taking over the DC universe and wanting to take things in a different direction? Or do you think, yeah, no, this thing will at some point happen? Is I, it? You know, I think a lot of this Flash movie depends on the success of Shazam, to be honest. Mm. I think if they Which have, looks so good, It looks so good, and, and if this lighter approach to superheroics... I mean, Ezra Miller is a, a gifted actor and he's he's a he's a gifted comedic actor Hmm. he's got a great presence and i think if shazam is is the i mean it's not gonna make a billion dollars but if it does really really well i think we will see a follow-up a flash movie will get fast tracked into production because it's the closest thing they have to a shazam like character and uh they'll they'll have i I think the real problem with this flash movie has been always what is it going to be what is the flash story we can tell on the big screen that people are already getting on the small screen? And I think that's actually really hard to do because the rogues gallery, the flash rogues gallery isn't so much a big screen rogues gallery. It's, it's mm. working better on TV and they've really mined it. What so, mirror master isn't a great big screen villain. Is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah. I, I think that's been the real problem with the flash movie is how do you tell a big screen flash story? And I think it's hard. And I think that's what the big problem is. And I think the, the 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 directors that have come and gone and the screenwriters that have come and gone have not been able to lick the story they want to tell. But I think if Shazam works, Shazam is a more, for all of its magic and craziness and Dr. Savannah and all that, it's more of a grounded, you know, it's it's just as much fun walk, watching Shazam walk into a, a 7-Eleven to buy beer as it is to yep. watch him fighting over the skies of whatever city Fawcett City or wherever he's living, <laughs> I, I mean, and you you get you would get that with a Flash movie too, you know, it, Flash being funny and doing Flash like things on his own can be just as amusing as I mean, what if you what if you opened a Flash movie with the end of the run that we saw begin at the end of Justice League that the movie opens with Flash and Superman, the Flash and Superman running race. around the world or something. I mean, come on. There's so many things you could do, but I, I think this is going to happen. I think Ezra Miller is a is a gifted performer that people like to work with, and I, I hope this movie gets made, but I think it's really going to depend on how Shazam does. I'll tell you what, I, I liked Justice League. It, it had some significant problems, I admit, but I had fun with it, and one of the big reasons I had fun with it was I really quite enjoyed Ezra Miller's uh, incarnation of the Flash. He was the heart of that movie. Yeah, I, I thought he was it was fu- he was charming and funny, and you just found his quirky awkwardness appealing at the same time. And he had he had a lot of the funniest stuff in the movie as well, and I really liked it. I would like to see his incarnation on the screen. And you're right if you because if you look at Shazam, which again looks so good right now, if you look at Shazam. And you get a sense of the tone they're going for. You look at Aquaman. You're getting a sense of this new kind of tone that Walter Hamada is bringing. Flash just seems to fit in with that. He just seems to fit in with that perfectly. But I'll tell you what. Every month that passes, Robert, my doubts rise. While I would like to see it, I think there's some good common sense arguments that you laid out as to why they should do it. But I'm telling you, every month that passes and every new delay and every new bump, it just makes me think, I'm doubting this thing's ever going to happen. And, and I, I don't know. Some people thought they were going to do a Flashpoint movie to kind of reset the WBDC universe. That clearly didn't happen. doesn't mean you can't do a Flashpoint movie as a standalone. You can. But I don't know, man. I don't know. We're going we're gonna to have to wait and see.